want to take some time to answer some of the email questions you've sent in as we bring it on today. Gordon, this first one is from a viewer who says, my atheist sister has been backing away from the family because of our views and faith. We don't force God down her throat, but she is becoming more and more open about her thoughts, even to the point that she's not attending family functions and even refusing to gather for prayer on holidays. There is much tension now. We want her included, but she's excluding herself. Do you have any thoughts or scriptures on how to handle this? Um, my first thought is uh, you, you never argue anyone into heaven. Uh, the experience of salvation is just that. It's an experience. Uh, it's a revelation that comes. And if you don't have the revelation, uh, I feel sorry for you. Uh, but there, it, to argue with someone uh, is it, just not going to, it's not going to work. Uh, you love people into the kingdom. It's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. And those are the scriptures that come to mind. For your sister, I would encourage you to pray uh, out of the book of Jeremiah, uh, chapter 3. Uh, it's a wonderful verse, verse 15. I will send pastors, some translations call it messengers, after my own heart to lead you in understanding and wisdom. So pray that for your, your sister, that there would be messengers after God's own heart that would show her God's love and, and, and do that. But keep inviting her, uh, keep loving her, keep including her. If she wants to exclude herself, then that's her choice. Uh, but you have, have fulfilled the, the law of love and that's a wonderful law. So love her into the kingdom and see what happens. Well, here's one from John who asks, I live with my family in a small town. I'd like to get married, but there are so few Christians here and most of them are older. I go to a good local church with my family, but it doesn't have any singles ministries. I'm almost 28 and have never had a girlfriend, but I want to believe God for a miracle. God showed me the story of the fishes and loaves when I was praying for a wife, and I'm believing for a miracle of provision in that area. How can I build my faith for a miracle and prepare to receive my wife from God? Are there any special steps of faith I should take? Ah, oh, boy, John, that's a long question. Yeah. Um, uh, you may be getting too spiritual with this, uh, and you may have, have this expectation that, you know, the gift of God is going to appear on your doorstep and announce, you know, I'm the one for you. Um, and, and I think... You need to relook at that parable of the loaves and fishes, because here God God is saying Jesus is saying what what do we have, and so a little boy comes forward and he's got fishes and he got, he has loaves, and so Jesus takes those and then he blesses them and he breaks them, and a whole multitude is fed. There's a miracle of multiplication, but look back at to how did those loaves get there. Well, somebody had to go out and harvest grain and then thresh it and then grind it into flour and then knead it with water and yeast and bake bread. Somebody had to go out with a fishing line or a fishing net and get fish. So if God's showing you the story of the loaves and fishes, what he's saying, what are you bringing to the table? Are, are you going out and doing your part? Are you... Uh, out there fishing? Are you out there trying to bake some bread so you've got something for God to multiply? And so look at it that way. Uh, our, if, if you're in a small town, there are no singles groups. Uh, there's got to be a town somewhere near you where uh, they've got a singles group. There's got to be, you know, you may have to travel a little bit. Uh, but I would be out there looking. Uh, and please don't go to somebody and say, uh, you know, God has revealed you're the one for me. That's a pretty much guaranteed way to have them run away from you. Uh, so look, at, look again at that parable of the loaves and fishes. What do you have to do in order to bring something to God for there to be a miracle to happen in your life? Wise counsel <clears throat> from the woman's perspective. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to have somebody come up to you and no, say, you are, you are God's gift to me. <laughs> let, God, let God reveal that. Okay. This is Kelly who says, I was born again 20 years ago and then I backslid. Ever since I repented over eight years ago, I just don't have the joy or peace I used to know initially. My prayers seem to bounce off the wall and the Bible just doesn't make sense. I have a deep hunger for God. It seems he's turned his back on me. What can I do? Kelly, go to the end of the Gospel of John and read the story of the restoration of Peter. 
Here's Peter. He wept bitterly. He denied Jesus three times. He was strong in faith, but then he, he found out, no, I'm weak. And I love what Jesus told him. He told him three times to restore him three times. He told him, you know, first, number one, do you love me? And then number two, he directed him, go feed my sheep. So God's asking you, do you love me? And, and if you love him, go and feed his sheep. And in that process, in, in the process of building somebody else up in faith, you will find your faith restored and your joy restored. 